Now, India will also be keeping a close eye on the Indian Ocean and what happens in the South China Sea. Taiwan goes to the polls on the 13th of January. That's just 12 days from now. And these 12 days are extremely crucial. China is betting big on this election. What happens if the result does not make Xi Jinping happy? Will the Chinese president's dream of unifying Taiwan with China mean conflict in South China Sea? Beijing has been preparing to take over Taiwan by force for a while now. Xi recently sounded a warning to Taiwan. It came in the form of a New Year message. Xi Jinping said, reunification with Taiwan was a historical inevitability. He added that compatriots on both sides of the Taiwan Strait must share in the glory of national rejuvenation. Another New Year speech was delivered in Taiwan by the outgoing president Tsai Ing-wen. She said the cross-strait relations should be decided by the will of the Taiwanese people. Xi Jinping does not agree. He believes in history, in one China, not democracy. Tsai Ing-wen's government has repeatedly warned that Beijing is trying to interfere in the election. And let me remind you, it helps China if the KMT or the Kuomintang party wins this election. The party is pro-Beijing. Meanwhile, Tsai's DPP or the Democratic Progress Party insists on a sovereign Taiwan. And polls say come 13th of January, it will be a neck and neck fight. I ask once again, what happens if the results don't make China happy? Analysts are predicting a serious conflict in the South China Sea. So will Xi Jinping's dream of one China be the trigger? And if that's the case, will the war in South China Sea be fought by just Taiwan and China? There are other disputes too. They have created several flashpoints in these dangerous waters. For example, the second Thomas Shoal and the Scarborough Shoal. Philippines and China have been facing off here. The Philippines has accused China of firing water cannons at its ships, firing laser at its vessel, also ramming into its ships. China does not deny this aggression. Instead, Beijing refers to them as legitimate controlled measures to protect its so-called territory. You see, China claims more than 80% of the South China Sea. This water, Beijing claims, was historically Chinese. For the longest time, China used the Nine Dash Line to demarcate this territory. In 2023, China introduced an additional Tenth Dash. Beijing has for long been preparing for a war here, all the while embracing in grey zone in the hope to make quiet but substantial gains. And that's actually worked, worked well for China. It has also militarized three Spratly Islands, created seven military outposts in the area. And China is not the only one preparing for a conflict in these waters. After Ferdinand Marcus Jr. won the presidential election in the Philippines, he expanded the U.S. military footprint in his country. This was under EDCA, or the Enhanced Defense Cooperation Agreement. It authorizes the United States to station forces across nine locations in the Philippines. Some of these sites are near the Spratly Islands. Some of these sites face Taiwan. The Philippines believes if and when China invades Taiwan, Manila will most likely get involved. These face-offs with China at sea have added to this conviction. What they have also done is push Manila closer to Washington. You see, a war in the South China Sea will not be limited to just two parties. The U.S. and in particular its President Joe Biden have repeatedly vowed to go to war if China invades Taiwan. Japan has started rearming itself in the meantime. It is preparing to be dragged into this war. Vietnam and China had a recent standoff over oil drilling in 2023. Brunei and Malaysia are also engaged in disputes with China and the South China Sea. Up to 30% of sea trade passes through the South China Sea. Analysts believe these waters are one flare-up away from a full-blown war. Beyond World is One is now available in your country. Download the app now and get all the news updates on the move.